or what I'm doing. I've got a couple of topics here that I wanted to talk about. Number one, this really, really interesting article that I saw pop up on uh, the Metro. Um, and, and a topic that, again, doesn't get so spoken about too often. Um, something that's quite um, poo-pooed for the most part, which is odd, isn't it? Considering just how... It's weird that we don't talk a lot. We don't talk often about talent or about genetic, um, you know, gifts people are given. Um, we don't really talk about it too often, especially when we live in a world where we want to tell everyone that they're special. You know, genetic gifts will kind of curtail into that mold, right? Because everyone's got different genetic gifts for the most part. But we don't necessarily speak about it in that way, sense of form. We just tend to kind of put that to one side. And also hard work isn't something people talk about too often too, because I don't know if hard work has a um, an underlaying white privilege tone to it for some people i don't know if that's the thing or if hard work is yeah or maybe hard work is kind of drenched in privilege in some respect like oh you can only work hard if you have the time to work hard if you're doing imagine someone that maybe the pushback would be oh if you're working two jobs um you don't you don't have time to work hard on your passion project right which is probably the reason why people hate when joe rogan says um oh um he thinks that everyone should um you know, start up a little, you know, knife making workshop, a knife making, you know, boutique or make furniture um, and pursue their dreams because essentially he's someone of uh, privilege who's telling you to, you know, do away with your daily nine to five and pursue your passion, which, you know, we're not able, we're not quote unquote able to do. I don't know what the thing is, but regardless, interesting. So this article, going back to what I'm speaking about, is from the Metro and it's titled Ozzy Oborn Survives Rock and Roll Lifestyle Thanks to a Genetic Mutation in His DNA. Right, very right. something I've something I've always kind of believed, and I think it kind of kind of bears to roost a little bit now with the hip hop scene in general. Right, I think we heard a lot of stuff talking about Future when he was, you know, he's still doing it now, but you know, before when he was really boasting about his drug use on the weekend, a lot of people were saying, "No, how were they able to produce so much music at that level when they're doing so much drugs and getting fucked up so often?" But the you know the reality of it is most likely that number one, that you know we we all have friends who are. Uh, good drinkers right who can hold their liquor hold their booze um guys or girls who can drink people under the table per se it's no different to an artist right someone some some people are able to um are able to um what do you call it handle the stuff that they're doing recreationally or some people can you know use it as fuel to you know again to inspire their creative um juices wherever it may be and i always assumed Ozzy was one of the same way too right because you heard so many stories about how much how hard he went back in the day or even still now um uh, back in the day during black sabbath days and now even now when he's doing a solo career that you just thought like how's this guy still alive like how's he still here and thanks to his book that's newly been published we know that now it's a genetic mutation so the t- the threat the article says the following Ozzy Osbourne lived um uh lived a drug-fueled life but despite so okay here uh but despite rocking out at every chance he got the icon is still going strong at 70 years old but well, he doesn't you know he looks haggard for 70 to be fair um and while we question how he managed to stand the test of time it seems uh biologist bill sullivan has figured out how the black cyber star has such a high tolerance against both drugs and alcohol in his new book please to meet me uh gene uh genes germs and the curious forces that make us who we are the scientist puts um aussie's remarkable survival down to genetics which we all was uh, um, aware of and we need some of these genes he wrote Ozzy is indeed a genetic mutant which fans could have probably guessed but it's supposedly the rocker's genetic mu- va- um, variation mutation that have allowed him to live through such an extreme lifestyle just last year the star spoke to o- orange county register about his substance abuse and how he has finally packed it all in finally at 70 years old he decided to pack in the drugs right it's fucking amazing <laughs> he told the publicist i don't drink anymore um, I don't smoke tobacco. I don't do drugs. I'm not. I'm doing good right now. I I now think. How did I go through? How did I think going into a bar and getting smashed along? Um, all all that cocaine was fun. The Mr. Cowley hit maker who is married to Sharon Osbourne added. I come to think that if if right now you had a gun and a bag of cocaine and a gun and a booze and you said take your pick, I pick up the gun. It's not worth it. I don't believe in making New Year's Eve resolutions, so I won't be making one this year. I just hope God keeps me alive. And he sure has been kept alive this year. The star suffered the countless high off issues, blah, blah, blah. So, again, they only have one quote from the author, but I'm, I've got the book in my read, in my watch list, so I can't wait to um, check it out. But, yeah, we we're, were, were all aware that he was a genetic mutation, a genetic freak. But it's interesting because you hear there are some arguments against stuff like this, right? Because you hear people, I think more so maybe in the fat movement, there is this idea that, you know, that they're genetically 
predisposed to be bigger people when you know i don't know if that if that is actually true but there is also that interesting thing i mentioned before about you know these influencers are extremely skinny extremely slim who you know genetically do look like they were predisposed to be that size you know even under the layers of fat now kind of suddenly inspiring a nation of women to or you know an army full of women on the internet to decide to go healthy and stuff again it's a weird hustle uh because i don't think it could work in the men's um way that way it, i don't think working with the men's industry too much because i think for the most part the guys are aware that most bodybuilders are taking steroids they're most aware that most of the bodybuilders come from you know a background of years and years of hard work um in the gym so it's not as if they, they're going to sign up to do a class with you know name your favorite bodybuilder and expect him to become to look like him but you know they want some level of kind of guidance and direction on what they should do um but yeah i think that was the article is really interesting and i think by and large, hopefully going forward, people with substance abuse problems or people that are trying to, you know, um, engineer a lifestyle that is similar to Ozzy Osbourne are aware that, you know, you're not Ozzy Osbourne, unfortunately. And I just think, especially in that era too, I don't think you can discount how important it was to maybe have, to have done drugs maybe in the 60s and 70s when they were maybe getting more purer stuff than we are getting nowadays. I think nowadays doing that kind of level of drugs, especially considering how much synthetic stuff's out there, how much fake shit's out there, would probably be a recipe for disaster for the most part. I'd imagine so. I guess back in the day, if you're getting stuff directly from the source, if it hasn't been touched, if the demand isn't that high, um, so, you know, there's not much of it, so they don't need to dilute any of it. There's not many mouths to feed per se or noses to kind of occupy. You can probably get rid of that quite easily. Um, but again, I think that book is interesting. I'm really curious to kind of read it out. Um, I'll t- let you know what the title is here again, just so you can check out yourself. Um, it's by a guy called Bill Sullivan, and the book is called Please to Meet Me, Genes, Germs, and the Curious Forces that Make Us Who We Are.